everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Jasmine. I'm from Helping Minds Online. I am a registered practicing provisional psychologist and my channel is all about psychoanalyzing and providing social commentary on topical events or I like to psychoanalyze celebrities. So I basically integrate psychological concepts into relevant topics to give you a fresh spin as well as broaden your opinion but I also explain everything in a way that is easy to understand and therefore easy to apply to your own life. Having this knowledge can empower you to change your life for the better. So if you want to be entertained as well as find out interesting psychological tips and tricks that you can apply to your life, then hit subscribe. I also offer online support. It's convenient, it's anonymous, and it's also affordable. So the link is in the bio and do check out my IG, which is Helping Minds Online for daily tips on a better you. Now let's get into it. Today we're going to talk about the recent celebrity romance that is Pete Davidson and Kim K, or Kim Kardashian, sorry. Um, I feel like Kim K needs no introduction. David Letterman will certainly agree. And for those of you who don't know who Pete Davidson is, he is an actor, writer, producer, and comedian. And a little lesser known fact um, is that he actually lost his father who was a firefighter in 9-11, the tragedy. So that happened when he was just seven years old and he openly talks about his mental health issues, including borderline personality disorder. He also has Crohn's disease, which is an inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and it's really awful to live with. He also is just 28 years old. I didn't realize he is so young. He's just a baby, but the fact that um, Davidson is so open about both his mental health and his physical health diagnoses just shows so much courage and so much transparency in, in my eyes anyway. So as always, I will always open up the videos by explaining and admitting my biases. And the reason is so that then you can um, basically form your own objective opinion, knowing what perspective I sort of bring into this, these videos. Uh, our biases, they skew how we view things, the beliefs that we hold, it even influences our behavior. So my biases that I brought into this video would center around borderline personality disorder itself. There is a huge, huge stigma associated with it. So I really hold Pete Davison in high esteem for being so frank and so open about living with the disorder because it does so much to dispel some of the stigma associated with it. And it is highly misunderstood and stigmatized by clinical professionals. We all unfortunately do this. So it is often attributed actually as being the most stigmatized condition in psychiatry today. I also take suicidal thoughts and acts of self-harm very seriously. Well, we, we all should, but as a professional, there is also that level of care. So the fact that um, Davidson engages in both these behaviors would skew my opinions towards him where I might be overly empathetic and that I might assume all of his behaviors to be archetypal of borderline personality disorder when there could be other explanations. So just to flesh that out a little, just to explain what I mean there, research suggests that those with borderline personality disorder are more adept at detecting anger so like anger in a person's face. So I could take this finding and use that to explain one of the attractions, for example, between him and Kim K because Kim doesn't display anger 
um, oh sorry, she, she is limited in displaying anger within her face and that could be an attractive and a safe feature for him because he may be more skilled at detecting anger and the fact that Kim doesn't display signs of anger could be really reassuring for him. It could be really appealing, really attractive. And that could be one of the reasons why he's attracted to her. But that's a, that's a bias that I bring into this equation because in actuality, maybe he's just really attracted to her enormous bottom or maybe her long dark hair does it for him or her legal aspirations, like it doesn't all have to be aesthetic. Now, if you feel like Kim K um, does express anger, let's look at the evidence, shall we? So here we see a fight with Courtney, her sister, and they are literally about to physically strike each other. She's about to hit her seconds before this frame, but she looks like she could be meditating right now. And this is actually the face of what typifies a female fight, by the way. How random and funny is that smiling girl in the background there? Like, why are you smiling right now? Seriously. Anyway, so those were my biases. So today we are going to discuss Kim K and PD, um, sorry, and, and P Davidson, uh, what that attraction might be based on using psychological concepts of attraction and also exploring the role of borderline personality disorder within a relationship. I'll also explore their possible trauma bonds and by that I mean when people experience traumatic childhoods they often wind up being attracted to others who have also experienced traumatic childhoods. Like, do you find that if you've been subjected to trauma, if you've experienced as a child, are you finding that as an adult, when you look at your circle of friends, are there other, like, are most of you in the same boat there? Have you all experienced trauma? Um, if you want some explanations as to why that might, might be the case, please do subscribe to my channel because I do break down the impact of trauma on the adult mind um, quite a bit. So it's one of my favorite topics. Also, some of you may be in a relationship with someone with borderline personality disorder, or maybe you have it yourself. So just simply understanding the role of mental conditions within romantic relationships can really help your relationship or can really help you. And of course, these topics are, are very interesting as well. So Kim K and Pete, let's first explore my theory on their trauma bonds. What I mean by this is how after experiencing complex trauma, it can change the brain and it can change your body too. So one way it can do this is through the deregulation of cortisol, which is a hormone that's associated with stress. So you can think of it as like the fight or flight hormone. Often, what can happen is when we are exposed to trauma or stress constantly, it can change our brain, it can change our physiology, it can change our thoughts, and it can even change our behavior. So how friendships or attraction might form, as a very basic level example, let's just say trauma or abuse occurred as a child. Research suggests this can be associated with elevated cortisol levels, which can be associated with impulsivity. Simply because, this is one reason for this, is because they make decisions faster. This stems back to fight or flight. It's a protective mechanism. You make a decision quick or you die when that tiger comes to, to eat you. It's an ancestral trait which ensured the evolution of humankind. So if you are impulsive, maybe you're more inclined to gamble or impulse purchase, and then you will find people who engage in similar activities. And as you share similar traits, an unlikely friendship can form. 
So it is of no surprise to me that Kim K was besties with Paris Hilton as she has gone through extensive trauma as a child and still experiences anxiety to this day. Similarly, there is a movement by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk um, stating that many mental illnesses are simply trauma responses. Of course, this cannot be true for every instance, but research shows a strong relationship between diagnoses of borderline personality disorder, bipolar disorder, and generalized anxiety disorder with complex trauma. Essentially, stress susceptibility and reactivity in borderline personality disorder is thought to mediate both the development of and the continuance of the symptomatology. And heightened stress and trauma exposure is actually considered an early life risk factor for developing the condition. Plus, stress and trauma moderate the symptom trajectory, so they interact with how severe the symptoms will be. Like that's the simplified version. So key people within Kim's life, her bestie, her family members, her partners, they meet criteria for having been diagnosed with various mental illnesses. And my point is, is that trauma changes the brain. It changes how you interact with people. It changes the people that you click with, the people that you won't click with. So that's basically how I'll simplify the complexities of psychological theory into ways that we can all relate to. That's what my channel is all about. People exposed to trauma, you can change your brain. You can change your reactions to trauma and stresses. And it can mean that you're going to click more with certain people who have also been through trauma. Britney Spears' friendship with Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton with Kim K. Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. Rhiannon and Katy Perry. Katy Perry, Russell Brandt, Mariah Carey, James Packer, like that was such an unlikely romantic relationship. And some of these pairings, you, you might have also been thinking like, how on earth did those two hit it off? Any other like unusual pairings that could be attributed to like-minded trauma experiences that you would like to share, please do comment below because I'm sure I've missed out on a few before. So I hope you can also see how psychology can be fun and interesting and how you can apply it to celebrities. Do you agree with me? Don't forget to subscribe if so. Anyway, I really think that in some cases, people with mental conditions can find themselves just gravitating to people, um, to certain people, or there may be an affinity towards others with other mental conditions too. So the fact that Kim K was with someone with bipolar disorder and is now with someone with borderline personality disorder, that fits within my theory and it fits within that argument. So, so if that's the case, like what mental condition might Kim Kardashian have? Let me know if you want me to do a video on this I'm not going to explore it today. There's just not enough time. Now, when Kim K and Peter Davidson were announced, I thought it was a publicity stunt or I thought that there would be genuine affections there. Kim was with Kanye, who has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I'm drinking Milo. It's so yum. And now she's with Pete Davidson, allegedly, and he has borderline personality disorder. Now, although these are two very distinct disorders with their own individual set of symptoms. There are some symptoms that can overlap. This can occur for many mental conditions too, by the way. And 
Also, with borderline personality disorder, rarely is this diagnosed alone. It commonly um, co-occurs with other disorders, so it's usually comorbid, and it can be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So what we have now is research showing that heightened stress and trauma exposure are considered as risk factors for the onset of borderline personality disorder, which is um, Davidson's diagnosis, and of bipolar disorder, which is Kanye's diagnosis. Then we have some symptoms that can overlap for the two disorders. And one of those symptoms is impulsivity. Another is suicidal behavior, uh, suicidal thoughts or ideation. And then another is mood instability. So extremes in mood, but possibly more of what you might uh, call like the down moves, like um, uh, agitation, anger, anxiety, irritation. And this symptom will usually only last though for a few hours, rarely for more than a few days for both conditions. So in summary, as both Pete and Kanye have mental conditions, possible overlapping, overlapping symptoms, this could be familiar territory for Kim. Like, you know how they say we always date the same person? And so therefore I can understand the attraction. Plus, all three of them have experienced parental loss, which is a significant trauma, all in unexpected ways, and they were all taken far too soon, like all those parental units. Well, they were taken well before their time. Arena Scheich dating Kanye West, um, possibly after breaking up with Bradley Cooper, who also has externalizing mental health conditions, is again of no surprise to me. And also many of the Kardashian sisters or the Jenners, um, a lot of their relationship choices can be explained through trauma bonds, repeated behavior and cortisol addiction too. Now with Pete and borderline personality disorder, I will preface by stating these are all generalizations that I am making about some symptoms that can be attributed to someone with borderline personality disorder. I have never met nor treated Pete Davidson and of any individual with borderline personality disorder, every single person's symptoms, their symptom severity, how the symptoms manifest behaviorally, it's all different. So these are just generalizations that I am making to Pete, understanding that it is subject to huge personal variables. Also, if I am saying anything that perpetuates the stigma associated with borderline personality disorder, let me know. Let everyone know, please. This is your platform. And a side note, like that's another reason why I did this channel was to help dispel some of the, the stigma surrounding mental health and to hopefully create some discussion around it to just help spread awareness. So thank you for those of you that are on board and that have already subscribed. Like I, it's great, thank you. Now back to Pete, uh, there must be something about this guy because man, he, he gets some total babes. Would borderline personality disorder and its symptomatology draw someone into the relationship? So let's, let's take a look. So from Kazi David, who on a side note has shared how they both had mental health struggles whilst dating, further supporting my theory that in some cases, if one person has a mental health condition, you can be like more attracted to someone else who has it too. Then we have the painfully gorgeous Kate Beckinsale. Then Margaret Qualley, so not sure on pronunciation, sorry. We've got Kaya Gerber, also not certain on pronunciation here, but she is the daughter of that supermodel, Cindy Crawford. And Phoebe Dinovova, Dinovova, like what is with all these hard to pronounce surnames, seriously. 
Um, and then, of course, there is Ms. Grande. Now, they were engaged very early on in their relationship. I think it was after just a couple of weeks. And they separated um, two months after Mac Miller's passing. Mac Miller was uh, Ariana Grande's ex who died of an accidental drug overdose. Now, many of these relationships were relatively short. Ariana, Ariana was just five months, for example. Beck and Sal was about the same. Crowley was just two months, I think. And Gerber was about three months. Though, Cassie David was about two years. So, if you're romantically involved with someone with borderline personality disorder, what, what would it be like? Firstly, let's start off by defining the disorder. Traditionally, borderline was thought to describe if someone had a condition that was on the border of neurosis and psychosis. And then later it meant that if you were, like alarmingly what it meant was that you weren't on the border, but that you had both, that you had both neurosis and psychosis, which is all incorrect. It's all alarming and it's scary. And then the word was used to describe those who had some features of schizophrenia. All in all, it's been really confusing. So today it exists in the DSM and in summary, it is characterized by, simply put, great suffering on the part of the person themselves. They can show a pattern of behavior characterized by impulsivity, um, instability within their interpersonal relationships, within their mood, and within their self-image as well. A central characteristic is affective instability, which simply means heightened and intense emotional responses to environmental triggers. So that's, that's all that means. And then also a slow return back to th that baseline emotional state. So simply put, like that's their sense of calm. It takes a while to get back there. Plus, they can experience drastic and rapid shifts from one emotion to the other. So what we have is intense emotions, drastic and ra rapidly changing emotions, and then a longer than usual period taken to return to one's normal emotional state. Within a relationship, there can be a strong fear of abandonment and this can drive their tendency to adoption of an FP or favorite person, which is an attribute that is unique to borderline personality disorder. Often there can be an unhealthy attachment to, to your favorite person, meaning that their identity can be adopted. So you lose yours and you, you take on theirs. They will often do anything for their favorite person and the FP usually knows this. So it's important that they don't abuse this power. The, the FP can also dictate the emotions the person with borderline personality disorder will feel. So they can do something minor, for example, that can leave the person with borderline personality disorder in absolute despair. There may be a lack of boundaries and codependency and suicide and suicide ideation can occur. For example, if the uh, FP were to break up with them or hurt them. So it's really intense, it's vulnerable. And for the FP, it can mean that you have someone who completely and utterly idolizes you. So there could be a few motivating factors for Kim and Pete's relationship from either side. Some things that motivate her, some things that motivate him. It may still even be a publicity stunt, though I feel like Pete is too sincere to engage in something like that. Again, there is my bias towards Pete Davidson showing. What are your thoughts? My guess is it will be short-lived and hopefully 
they're bringing each other a little love and happiness because there's nothing wrong with short-term relationships that do exactly that so thanks for tuning in today don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video have a great day and a little mental health quote that I just wanted to share with you and I ripped it off my Instagram page is when you start practicing self-care you start feeling better you start looking better and you start to attract better but it all starts with you 